Hello everyone, this is Pedro from Italista with one more video. In this video, I'm just gonna demonstrate to you how to do streaming and transformations using Delta tables in Fabric. So, Spark has got this thing called Struct Stream, where you can stream tables. And then while you do the streaming, you can do transformations. So we are using one thing also called change data feed, because sometimes you have a use case where you wanted to propagate transformations down your Medallion architecture. So let's say you have a bronze table where you are capturing uh, all the changes in this table that you are loading to your data lake. And then you wanted to propagate those changes as they happen into the next layer, let's say silver. And you can do that by activating one thing called change data feed, which is a feature of Delta. I have the documentation of version 2.4.0, which is the current uh, runtime of Delta in Fabric. So you can read the documentation, but basically it enables, um, it likes CDC in databases. So you enable those change data feed and then you can read the feed and then use whatever is in the log of the feed and then propagate that using a merge statement, which is a feature of the tables. I'm going to give you an example and then with the example, it will become more clear. So I have here, I open a notebook in Fabric and I attach to a, a brand new um, lake house called CDF Streaming. So let me just rename this notebook to, and then I'm going to download an update on my Git repository, which will be on the description below. I call it CDF uh, example fabric. Cool. So these are the steps that I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to create a table and enable C, uh, CDF change data feed. And then I'll create like a sync table where I'm going to record the changes as they occur in a string and then i'm going to insert some data in the source table and then i'm just going to check the history check the feed for you to understand how the feed looks like and then i'm just going to read the feed stream from the table from the source table and then apply some transformations and i'm going to use like for each batch and i'll explain that and then while I'll that I will apply the change to the table downstream. So let's first create a table called names, which has got three columns. It's called like ident not identity, but an ID column, a name column, and an age. So I have another sequence point here uh, from previous runs, but let me just reset this page. So I have two tables, uh, so far one only. So I'll take a couple names and I have some queries here. So that has got no records as you can see. So let's create now a sync table uh, with another additional column that we'll have on the transformation, which will calculate age in days. And also that's gonna be an integer. Let's create this table. And I have to alter the table and set table properties to enable chain data feeds to true as it is in the documentation here. So let's do this. Have I done that? Uh, let me see. One second, 314. Yeah, I don't think I did. Let me just do this. And hopefully all good. And I'm just going to query the history. I'm using Python here uh, now. So I'm just going to load that table names. Let's see if the tables are here. Yeah, names and name sync. So and then see the history of names. And you can see that there are two versions, version zero, zero when I created and the version one is when I set the table properties um, to check data feed enabled. So the next thing, I'm going to insert a record just to show that the change is being recording. So let's run the query. 
can just delete this. Hmm. Come on. Yeah, finally it's here. So let's do the query. Let's set a new one. Select star from names. Okay. All right. So it's got a record there. And then you can read the chain data feed. And then you can use the Spark uh, read API. So Spark uh, read from a data. And then you have to put the options read chain data feed to true. And then you can do the start version to one. You can see that it's one. If I put zero, it's going to give me an error because it only can read the feed from the version that you set table properties uh, enable chain data feed to true, which is version one. So if I do that, so I'm saving to a data frame and then it says that it was change type, insert. So it's exactly the same table as the source, but add those three columns, which is the chain type, which is in this case insert, commit versions two and commit timestamp which you'll use later to uh, duplicate the records that's then coming on the stream. So I'm going to create like a transformation here, with, um, which I will be doing in while I propagate the changes. So I'm going to add a new column called age days, which multiply the current age by 365. So let's create this function. So I'll just test this, if this function is working. It, it is working. So I have another uh, function here that it, this is to the duplicate to make sure that I always get the latest version of the record. So what I'm doing here, I'm using a, a window function and a partitioning by ID, and I'm um, sorting in the descending order to get the latest version of the record on top. So, and then I'm gonna filter the top row in a way that I would not have duplicates because if I have duplicates in a merge statement, that it's gonna give me an error. All right, so now that's the more esoteric thing here. So in order to use this function here, I'm just gonna put in the um, on the string query below. So I have to use this for each batch, which means that when I read from my string, you can see here, I'm reading from my Spark string, of a table, uh, I, I can, uh, as, as it, because Spark breaks those um, streaming in micro batches, and then this micro batch I can pass into a function by using the method for it batch. And then, can you see this function here, batch processing? Is this this function here? What happened is when a micro batch arrives in the stream, I can write a function that takes two arguments. One argument is the data frame and the other argument is the batch ID. So that's here. And then what I'm doing here, I'm just going to do the transformation. I'm going to, to get the latest version of the record. And then I'm just going to use the normal mirrored statement uh, joining on the ID. So if there is something new, I insert. If there is something there already, you just update the record. So that's basically it. Let's run that. And then what I'm doing here, I'm just creating that string. You can see this first part here is the reading stream. And then I chain that into a write stream. And then everything that's arriving on the write stream, I pass into that function that's going to do the transformation. I'm using this um, trigger available now equals to true to trigger that stream once, once because what happened is once the stream, there's no more data in the stream, everything has been processed, the stream stop. And then I don't need to have my cluster running all the time. I can run this in batches. And the other option uh, here that I have to use is to create a checkpoint, just to make sure that if there is something that breaks in the middle, everything gets recorded. So let me just delete here the checkpoint that I had on my dry run. So the checkpoint is like a, a, um, a folder in your file system on your one leg where it's gonna record where the stream stopped. And then once I run that stream again, that's gonna be 
start exactly where it stopped from the last run. So that's the magic that happens behind. So let's run the stream. I'm just gonna save that into a streaming uh, variable here. And then I can check the status to see if the stream has completed. It says it stopped and then it's uh, not active. And then we can see if the uh, has been propagated to the uh, the sync table. Select star from names sync. What's happening? It looks like it hasn't hasn't propagated yet. What's happening? It should be there. Maybe my lake house is not. Yeah, it's here. I don't know, like my SQL query there is not so fast. So let's do another thing. Uh, we can add another record. So I'm just gonna add like Lily, a record two as age number, age 10. And then if I run that, so that's been recorded hopefully let me just do a trick here Look. yeah it's being added so if i run this stream again it's still running looks like it's complete uh, processing the data it still has not finished now it's finished. Now it should be propagated on the sync table. Not yet. Maybe fabric here takes a while. I'm pretty sure that it propagates. Let me just wait a little bit more. Yeah, it's propagated now. It's here, the transformation. Let's do one more thing. Let's update a record. Let's change the age of Lily. It's record two to 11. So I can do the SQL from here. Let's do from here. So if I do a SQL and do select star from names. So you can see that the age name is 11, but if I do a name sync, it's gonna be still 10, but because I forgot to run this, Again, it's running Looks like it hasn't finished. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it's finished. So let's do the last query and then that's the end. Yeah, it's propagated. So I'm just to simplify here tracking certain updates, but you can do deletes or any other logic that you would like you can apply let's say slow change dimension and any complex transformation that you want in order to propagate those changes from one layer to the other all right uh, thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe don't forget to like the video and thanks for watching see you next time